processes session two part one we're going to look now at bending pipe so the aims for this part of the session I want you all to be able to explain why it's preferred to use formed bends rather than any sort of elbows not just soldered elbows and we name at least one method of bending copper steel low carbon steel and plastic And I also want you to be able to state the formula that's used for calculating the length of a bend and actually be able to implement that formula, be able to use that formula and um, calculate the, the lengths of bends and overall length of pipe. So bending pipe. Bending pipe is better than using soldered elbows or, or any sort of elbows, compression elbows, push fit elbows. Um, not only because it's cheaper, but it also gives a smoother flow. There's less frictional resistance to the water going around a nice smooth bend than there is going around a sharp, a sharp elbow. And as a plumber, we should be able to bend most of the pipe materials we've looked at over the last few PowerPoints. There's different tools and methods used for, for each material. Well, bending copper. You can bend copper using a number of different things. We can bend it with a bending spring. We can bend it with a scissor bender, like this one just here. Or we can bend it with a stand bender, like this one here. Uh, a bending spring would only really you'd normally use for, for bending a very small diameter of pipe, ideally no more than 15 mil. Um, a scissor bender would only normally bend 15 and 22 mil with. And a stand bender, can bend a much bigger pipe up to about 40, 42 mil. Uh, spring benders, like I said, used to bend small diameter pipe. There's two two types, uh, an internal and an external type, and you can see exactly why what the difference is here. Really, the external one goes over the outside of the pipe, the internal one goes onto the inside of the pipe. The purpose of both of them is it supports the pipe as it's bent to stop it from kinking. We normally bend this uh, the, with a spring, we normally bend it over our knee. And the, the trick is always make sure that you over bend it slightly and then bend it back and that opens the throat of the bend, which makes it easier to take the spring out. Another useful trick to, to get the spring out is sometimes coil it up, twist the spring, causes it to sort of coil up, get, get it thinner and, and longer, and then you can, can sort of uh, pull it out more easily. This here is a scissor bender. Um, we use it for bending 15 and 22 mil, and we're going to look at um, how it works, which is uses the principle of leverage. It's got these two long legs on them, uh, to describe them as levers. Uh, and we use those, we pull them around um, with the other parts to make sure that we, we get a nice um, so smooth bend. So the component parts, the guilds might ask you about these, okay? Here we've got the pipe stop, the first one that we can see here. That sort of holds the pipe when, when you're bending it. Then these round bits here are the formers. This is a 15 mil former at the front here. 22 mil former at the back there. The roller, the bit that rolls round as you bend it, and the guide or back guide, uh, which you put in alongside the pipe to hold hold it tight against the pipe whilst you make the bend. Stand bender from 15 mil up to 42 mil, it can bend, and you might use it for light grade steel only. You wouldn't use it for medium or heavy grade steel because it would be just too too difficult to, to bend. The stand bender is adjustable. It's uh, this this bit here. If you if you twist the twist that bit there, that'll that'll move the roller in in or out. Um, and and you do that depending on what size of pipe you're bending. If you over tighten it, it can squash the pipe which would cause a re reduction in flow rates. If you don't tighten it enough, 
then it can cause ripples in the pipe when you bend it. Again, that could also cause friction, an increase in frictional resistance and a reduction in flow. Uh, all the parts are the same as with, with the scissor bender. Um, it's going to have a former, also have a back guide there, and a roller, and a pipe stop. Uh, hydraulic bend machines we use for bending steel, uh, and yeah, I mean, like I say, we'd use it for bending a medium and heavy grade low carbon steel. Worth noting that steel pipe has got a little bit of, of elasticity, so that means when you bend the pipe, it springs back slightly after you take the pressure off, and that uh, tells us that we need to over bend by roughly five degrees, uh, depending on whichever, whatever we're, we're bending, essentially. Um, and it's quite interesting the way that, that you can look at it. You, you, if you look at this angle that I've got shown here, you, you might need to, to bend the external angle um, to, say, 50 degrees for a 45 degree bend. You can see that it's been overbent and then springs back. That might differ if you're talking about the internal angle. Okay, the internal angle would technically is getting smaller and then it'd spring back larger. Okay. Uh, blending plastic pipes, well it's pretty straightforward. Normally plastic pipes would just bend with with our hands and held be held in position with clips. Sometimes you might Use a cold formed bend, for example, if it was going, it needs a fairly sharp bend and it needs to be supported on, on a washing machine or a dishwasher, for example. Right, now we're going to look at calculating the length of, of the bend, uh, or, or calculating pipe length. They always ask a question about this in the test every single year. So it, it needs to, we need to make sure that we know how to do it, okay? So we're going to look at how to do this over the next few slides. Okay, so a 90 degree bend is, is essentially the quart, a quarter of a circle. There's 360 degrees in a circle. So a 90 degree bend would be one quarter of a circle. To work out the length of the bend, if we can work out the, the total circumference of a circle and then divide it by four, that would get us the length of a 90 degree bend. So we're going to very briefly look at the term terminology that we're going to use. The circumference is, is all the way around the outside. Diameter is, is all the way across the middle, and the radius is half of, of the diameter. It's the distance from the centre to the edge of the circle. Um, the actual terminology that the um, the that you'd the method that you'd use to work out uh, the, the circumference would be pi, which is a a, is a mathematical constant number, um, which is roughly 3.142 times by the diameter. But when whenever we get these calculations, you'll only ever be told the radius. So we do it two times the radius because two times the radius makes up the diameter times by pi. So two times the radius times by pi. So if, if we, for example, had a radius of seven centimetres or 70 mil, we times that by two, which would give us 14 centimetres, times it by pi. And that would get the total circumference of this circle here. We'd then divide that answer by four, which would get the length of, of a 90 degree bend like you can see just here. To work out the total length of pipe, you'd then need to add any extra pipe lengths on each side. So we've got a worked example here. So dimension A is 400 mil, dimension B is 300 mil, 90 mil radius of the bend. Okay, so two times pi times the radius and divided by four is two times 90 times 
3.142, which gives us a total length of 365.56 millimetres. We divide that by four, should give us a total length of 141.39 millimetres. So we'd add that 141 to these other sizes here, 400 and 300, which should give us a total of 841 millimetres total length of bend. Okay, so as long as we can work out that length of bend, the rest of it's moderately straightforward. Okay. You can work out the total length of, of pipe by working out the length of the bend and adding the pipe lengths. And again, we've got another example here. So two, the radius of, of the bend is 30 mil, so two times 30 times pi divided by four gives us a, a total length <coughs> of bend, excuse me, of 47.13 millimetres. So in this case, we've got 500 on one side, 750 on the other. So the 500 plus 750 plus the length of the bend, which is um, 47 uh, and a bit mil, uh, which comes to a total of uh, roughly 1.3 metres or 1,297 millimetres. Now it is time for you to do this task. <coughs> 